Dr. Davis here from South Georgia Spine and Joint Center. Uh, we're going to talk today about disc herniations, okay? So there's things out there called disc herniations and disc bulges, and both of them can give you presentations of radiating pain down the leg. So we all know someone who, uh, you know, has this radiating pain down the leg. Sometimes it stops at the knee. Sometimes it goes all the way to the foot and causes, uh, you know, numbness in the toes and the feet makes it hard to walk legs cramp those types of things so we're going to dive into the material here and get an idea of you know what is a disc herniation what's a disc bulge look at the structure of the disc and the vertebrae give you a better clear idea of what's going on and how we can solve the problem at south georgia spine and joint center using a medical integration okay there's many other conditions out there that mimic disc and herniated disc problems, okay? So things just from arthritis in general, the pelvis being off makes that piriformis muscle stretch, maybe hits the sciatic nerve. They call that piriformis syndrome. So there's things and tests that we have when we do our initial exam that can determine, does it sniff out more like, you know, a disc herniation or is it really coming from that piriformis muscle? You know, there's things called spondylosis, spondylosis deformans, spinal stenosis, uh, spondylolisthesis, which is where one vertebrae shifts in front of the other one. So these are all conditions that can give you radiating leg pain. And we're gonna discuss those conditions in, a different, in different posts. But for today, we're gonna dive into what a disc herniation is, the structure of the disc, and give you an idea of how we can treat it. So when we look at a disc, and some of the herniations that go along with it. A lot of people think a herniation is just the disc kind of blew out or it's hitting the nerve. They don't really understand that there's multiple disc herniations, different types of presentations based on where they point out and come out, okay? But the first thing is to understand is what is the disc? So obviously the disc is like this blue jelly material in here that's shown here. On the outside, you have what's called the annulus fibrosis, okay? So this is like thicker, tight tendons, think of it that way, that kind of keeps everything compact in there, all right? Right in the middle is a more gelatinous type material called the nucleus propulsus. So think of this whole structure as like a jelly donut. That's the easiest thing to understand. So if I'm holding a donut and I squeeze it, it's gonna shift a little this way, and then when I unsqueeze it, it comes back. That's what the disc and the materials do all day long. When we're moving and sitting and bending over is, the jelly donut kind of squashes and sends it in different directions, but it's designed to come back to its original state. When you're injured and you have specific types of herniation, these materials start to move and leak out and you can kind of see how this works. So in a traditional disc bulge, it would be more on this presentation here. So what that means is because of the pressures of whatever you did, you bent over and picked up a box or picked up your kid or kept repetitively leaning over and leaning over and leaning over and now all of a sudden this disc didn't do what we wanted it to do put it that way a lot of it comes from dysfunction that starts and leads to this this little disc bulge kind of sticks out here and encroaches on the nerve here if you can kind of see that all right what happens is this gelatin material starts to leak but as you can see it's still contained within the structure of that annulus fibrosis so it's doing what that that picture shows it's bulging but it hasn't come through that material, all right? Now that can give people leg pain and give you radiating pain because it's hitting those nerves, all right? Now, when you come over here to a traditional disc herniation, you can clearly see that this material now has leaked out a little bit of that annulus fibrosis, so it's leaking a little bit more and putting even more pressure on the nerve. That's a traditional herniation. Now with herniations, there's different types of ones. So this is what we call a lateral herniation, where it's coming out to the side. You could also get it coming out to the other side. If it's coming straight out, they call that a central one. So there's different ones depending on the presentation. 
So this one leaking out, say towards this right, if you lean towards your left, it would take pressure off this area. And that's why people lean to an opposite direction when they have a herniated disc because they're leaning off the herniation, okay? The last one is what's called a sequestered disc and you can kind of read about it there. What a sequestered disc means is it kind of like blew out. So this material is really leaking out. It's not contained at all. And it's just kind of going everywhere and hitting different parts of the nerve. A lot of times you'll see presentations with this one where someone's reflexes are off or someone's main loss of sensation down the leg or their leg is given out. And there's major neurological components to that. A lot of times that may be a surgical implication because a lot of the things chiropractic, medical, and physical therapy can do sometimes is maxed out if you let it get to this point. So the key is when you get a disc bulge, God forbid, or you have that herniation is you get treatment right away that's multidisciplinary. So you're getting a medically uh, based approach where you're using medical, physical therapy, and chiropractic together to help these two situations. Because once you get to that sequestered disc, sometimes it's a point of no return and surgery could be inevitable. So using a medically integrated approach, you can help the bulge and the herniation. And we've helped a lot of people do that. But this just gives you kind of an overview of what it is. That way you can put a picture with your condition. So now looking at a disc bulge on the spine. The best way to kind of see it, a bulge and herniation, is you see these discs here, okay? This kind of separates each vertebrae, and that's that picture we saw earlier where you got that little jelly donut, you push one way and it kind of moves, and that's what happens when we move all day and move around and extend and sit and do different things. These discs are constantly taking a hit, but they're designed to do that to go different ways and go back in position, absorb shock, things like that. However, when we have an injury, a lot of times it's bending over and picking up something. That's the most common one. But you can get it from things like sneezing and coughing too much. I mean, I've seen that a ton of times. Uh, being pregnant, a lot of times that happens. Uh, you know, being degenerative over time and then picking things up, that's a big key. And you can actually sort of prevent that if you get treatment early enough, you know, keeping the spine stable and keeping things moving and hydrating and things like that but god forbid when you get to a position like this you can clearly see these green things represent represents the nerves coming out of the area you know off the spine let's put it that way now these discs here are fine but when you get down to this one you can see this one's kind of bulging out if not herniated out so like I said, when this material leaks out and bulges, it can hit this nerve. So when it hits this nerve, these, these nerves go all the way down to the back and then they go all the way down to the legs, down to the feet. It's like a highway system. So just this little, this little bulge or this little herniation overall can cause lots of pain and lots of radiating pain down the leg. So that's the key is keeping this spine and keeping this lumbar spine moving in all different planes of motion, all right? If you're doing repetitive motion where you're leaning forward, leaning forward, leaning forward, you know, all the things in life people do, or sitting, sitting in this position, you know, if I'm just sitting all day like this, that can put extra stress on the joints, extra stress on these discs, and give you more prone, uh, uh, you know, more potential, let's put it that way, of having a problem like this and letting those discs either bulge out or herniate. So the biggest thing we want to do is get treatment early enough, and that starts with a multi-integrated approach. So what we're going to do now is kind of explain some of the things here at South Georgia Spine and Joint Center that we do for disc herniations and disc bulges, and we've had great success doing it. So at South Georgia Spine and Joint Center, using a medically integrated approach is pretty much all we do. And for a condition like disc herniation or disc bulge, 
There is no condition maybe more deserving of a medically integrated approach than a herniated disc or a bulging disc, and here's why. Because of that bulging and herniated disc, obviously you're hitting the nerve, you're getting radiating pain down the leg. What's happening is you're getting tons of stress and tons of inflammation at that area because that's where the area is hurt. All right, so what people are trying to do is they want to do chiropractic to help the problem. They want to do physical therapy to help the problem. And those things help, and we're going to explain that. But what's happening is they're living their life and doing these treatments, and sometimes they get even more inflammation. So what we do at South Georgia Spine and Joint is when we use medically integrated approach and you see our medical team, our nurse practitioner, and our medical doctor, uh, they're excellent at reducing the inflammation. So there's many combinations, again, they can do, but after we get you know, the x-rays and our MRIs, they know exactly what nerve, what disc is dysfunctional, where the inflammation is, and they do a series of treatments that reduces that inflammation. So if there's any uh, condition more deserving of a medically integrated approach, it's definitely a disc herniation or a disc bulge. And the reason for that is when you start reducing that inflammation regularly with regularly treatments by the medical team, you're able to handle the physical therapy and the chiropractic better to solve the dysfunction. Those are the two things that are solving the dysfunction. The medical team isn't solving the dysfunction but they're a piece of the puzzle for long-term solving of the dysfunction to de reduce that inflammation. So when people just get medical treatment alone for, for herniated disc, that's a problem because there's a di dysfunction in the biomechanics of the spine and the ligaments and the tendons and the, the bones and the muscles, maybe even in the pelvis. All right, there's a dysfunction there that's not been solved and it got to the point where now you have a herniated disc. But that inflammation is so high that the medical team comes in and reduces that inflammation. And now you can handle the treatments to become functionally resilient and to become stable and help that herniation and that disc bulge. You see how that works? So it's imperative to once you have this condition, you get to the medical team right away and reduce the inflammation because you'll flare yourself up outside of here, all right? Just living your life and doing the things you do in life, you're gonna constantly re-inflame that disc. So you have to reduce the inflammation or it's tough to get anywhere. So right off the bat, medical integration, reducing the inflammation multiple times, doing a series of treatments to get that inflammation down, get it more down, get it more down, bam. Now the inflammation is low, if not gone, and you're now solving this the dysfunction with chiropractic and physical therapy and helping that disc. That is the number one and best way to start the process of healing these discs. So when we add chiropractic in for a disc herniation, that's another key component to helping that disc go back up and in. And the key with this is, is what we call decompression therapy. So there's a lot of research on traction and decompression for disc herniations and disc bulges, but this table and all the tables we have in, in all three locations here at South Georgia Spine and Joint provide that decompression which is needed for a radiating nerve pain. And it works every single time, and it helps most people. So remember, if the pelvis is off, that's gonna shift the spine and you're having a chance for herniated discs right there. If you got segmental dysfunction at the low back, no question, you're gonna have a risk of herniated discs for certain things you do outside of here. If you have degeneration or repetitive motions, all those things contribute to potential herniations. But once you have a disc, a disc bulge or a herniation, laying flat on this table and getting decompression is the key to opening up those disc spaces, all right? And where that herniation is bulging out, it's like that jelly donut we were talking about that now all of a sudden that thing wants to come back to its original position. Over time, we've seen in the research that that can happen. 
and it usually does in a lot of cases. With disc bulges, it happens a lot. With disc herniations, it does happen a lot. People get better. It's just a little bit more challenging, but we've had great success when you're reducing the inflammation and adding chiropractic and physical therapy. So what this table does, if you can see this, is when someone's laying a flat on their stomach, you know, we'll find the areas on the spine that we're going to decompress. But this table will drop down kind of like this. So you see how that drops? And then we bring it back up. All right, now we drop again. And then we bring it back up. So what it's doing is it's dropping the legs and the pelvis. And up here where the back would be, it's opening up those disc spaces to help that herniated disc and that bulging disc come back to its original position. So we've seen people that get pain in the legs and the feet and it starts to come back towards the back. We call that centralization, okay? So if you're getting pain down the legs, they call that peripheralization. And we don't want that. That's where you're getting that pain all the way down the leg. So what we do here is we do decompression. We'll bring you back up. And we take this hand and put it on different parts of the spine and we're opening it up. Then we bring it back. Then we open it up and drop again. And over time, you get what's called centralization, where the nerve pain now, they say, oh, it's not going to my foot, it's stopping at the knee. Beautiful. Now it's getting back towards the back. Now you keep doing treatments like this and realigning the pelvis. Now they say, oh, it's only going halfway down my leg. Great. Now you keep doing it. Now it's only in the back. So you went from a major peripheralization of the foot and now you're tracking it back just to the back. That's called centralization and you know now that that herniated disc is going back in its position because you're not hitting that nerve and getting that radiating pain all the way down to the foot. That's what we want, centralization. And when you reduce the inflammation with the medical team multiple times and you do consistent chiropractic and get on a care plan and get that disc to come back to its original position and decompress and get that, that pelvis realigned every time, that's another piece of the puzzle to solve this dysfunction. The last component is always physical therapy. And we've talked about this multiple times for other conditions. But the key, when you've reduced the inflammation with the metal team, and you've stabilized the pelvis, and you've done decompression, and that disc is starting to go back in, we know we gotta become functionally resilient, like we've said multiple times. And the key with that is, is now when things are going back in the original position, you're getting stable, you're still gonna go outside of here now and live your life. So we're gonna have to go grocery shopping. We're gonna have to get back to work. We're gonna have to sit again. We're gonna have to pick up our kids. We understand that. So physical therapy makes us functionally resilient by working all those muscles in the back. And we've mentioned some of the muscles, multifidus, erector spinae muscles. You gotta get them strong enough to stabilize the spine. A lot of times when people get herniated discs and bulging discs, it's those muscles back here have been so weak, they're not doing their job, all right, of stabilizing the spine. Some of it's the deep core, transversus abdominis, you know, internal, external obliques, things that keep the core stable. They're not fired up enough. They're not resilient enough. So now, when we're doing repetitive motions and leaning over, those back muscles are so weak that the bulging disc is starting to bulge because they don't have the muscles and fascia and tightness there to stabilize when you're doing things. So it's critical to get involved with physical therapy while you're doing chiropractic and while you're doing medical integration to get yourself to be functionally resilient, getting those muscles to fire up and stabilize the spine and don't let that bulge or that herniation take over and go beyond its perimeters. It's imperative to keep everything stable and keep the core stable and keep those muscles strong. You know, keep the pelvis aligned. There's things they can do, you know, if you got tight hip flexors and the pelvis is going off, there's things that, you know, attach into the uh, pelvis 
that need to be stretched and certain muscles that need to be activated. And once we get to that point where we activate those things and they show up, now that rehab disc herniation, that rehab disc bulge isn't as prevalent and least likely to happen in the future, all right? Because you become functionally resilient. So as you can see, a disc herniation or a disc bulge requires multiple therapies to be going on at the same time. And it's one of the conditions that actually responds quite well to a medically integrated approach, all right? So I know you know people who've been dealing with disc issues for probably years and they just live with it. I'm getting radiating pain down my leg and that's just the way it is. Or what they'll do is they think the only option is surgery. All right, and as we said before, that sequestered disc that kind of blows out, maybe that needs surgery. If you're losing balance and falling over and things like that, that's a possibility. But with herniations and disc bulges, we've had great success getting people out of pain and getting them back functionally resilient to live their lives virtually pain-free without getting surgery. And we've seen this a ton and ton of times where people come in and they think surgery is their only option, okay? So at South Georgia Spine and Joint Center, we know that's not the case. And we've seen it firsthand with thousands of patients, all right? So the key with this herniation as a patient walking in to a facility like South Georgia Spine and Joint, you need to think long term. This is a condition you know, if you have a, an SI joint problem and you got a little back pain just on the right side, it doesn't take that long. But disc herniations, if you really want to stay out of the operating room, you need to think long term. This is an injury that takes a little bit of time to treat. You're going to see the med medical team multiple times. All right. You're going to see the physical therapist and chiropractor multiple times. But the goal is over time to do these treatments together to reduce that inflammation. That's the first step. Get the pelvis stabilized, get the decompression going to get that nerve to kind of, that disc ball should come off the nerve and try to get in its original position. And then use physical therapy to become functionally resilient with the muscles and the stability around the core to protect that herniated disc and bulging disc. All right, so when you put all those factors together, you will get better in time, but it does take time. You need to get on a good care plan that gives your body enough time to heal and get everything back situated and get that, that nerve to calm down and get that disc to come off the nerve. That takes a few months, sometimes multiple months. All right, so if you can get in long term and you can set yourself straight to say, hey, I'm not going into the operating room then you're one step ahead of the game because you're gonna give your body time to heal and time to get better, all right? If you think it's gonna happen overnight, you're in the wrong place, all right? You're in the wrong place right here, all right? And so for many people, they've gotten surgeries and yeah, you get pressure off that nerve right away, but the problem is, is you never solve that dysfunction to begin with. It's always a dysfunction first, all right? pelvis is off you don't know it all right so you live your life and you go to work and you're on a lawnmower or you're on a tractor or you're picking up your kids or you're you know lifting things or working in the yard whatever it is and over time you're starting to get tissue stress and inflammation at the SI joint all right so we've talked about that before now you're getting pain at the SI joint okay so now the spine starts to curve a little bit and that presentation of how the discs are set up is a little off. Now you're getting tissue stress at the disc, all right? So you continue to do what you're doing. I'm bending over, I'm picking things up, I'm picking up my kids, I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm working in the yard. And now you're getting stress and inflammation at that disc. So what happens is those muscles that are not functionally resilient start to get weaker and let the disc start to bulge a little bit. So now all of a sudden, bam, I got a bulging disc and I can feel a little bit down my leg, but I'm not gonna do anything about it because I'm too prideful, right? I'm not gonna go and see a doctor because that's not what I do, all right? So I'm gonna continue to work and live my life. Now you've progressed to a herniation. 
Now you got more tissue inflammation, more stress. Now your radiating pains, instead of going down the leg, just the thigh, it's going all the way to the foot, all right? Now you're in a world of problems because if you let this continue, you're gonna be disabled, all right? That's the problem. It's years and months before you got this presentation that you had a dysfunction that was never addressed, all right? That is why it's critical when you have any type of pain to go see a chiropractor, go see a medical team, and go see a medically integrated physical therapist to, to at least do an evaluation and see what's going on so you can catch it before it gets too bad, all right? But if you're one that didn't catch it, we can still help you, all right? There's things we can do, as we've explained, to use that medically integrated approach to solve your pain problem. But with a, with a disc herniation and disc bulge, it takes longer. All right, so you need to strap in in your head. It's going to take time. You need to be consistent. And if you do that, there's no doubt you can get better and get out of pain. But you got to make it a long term effect. All right, so at South Georgia Spine and Joint, if you're dealing with these problems, again, call us. We got three locations we service South Georgia and North Florida. If you have these pains, think long term, come in, get medically integrated approach and solve this problem. Because if you let a disc herniation go too long, it's inevitable. You're gonna have probably a surgical problem. And then after the surgery, it ain't gonna be what you think. And you're gonna have disability and problems for the rest of your life. It's critical to get in and get this problem solved early. All right, so for South Georgia Spine and Joint Center, this is Dr. Adam Davis. And just remember, don't just manipulate, integrate.